The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Founders Edition has landed, riding a wave of anticipation that the PC gaming world hasn't experienced in years. We'd heard months of leaks and rumors suggesting a nearly unheard of performance improvements over the previous generation. And now that NVIDIA has unveiled the RTX 30 series, we can put those to the test. We've taken this $700 GPU through its paces, and the results are amazing. The RTX 3080 Founders Edition delivers just about everything NVIDIA's sky-high marketing promised and ushers in an era of true 4K 60fps gaming, ray tracing included. The RTX 3080 Founders Edition packs an impressive spec sheet. Compared to last generation's RTX 2080 Super, it more than doubles the CUDA core count and increases from 8GB of 256-bit GDDR6 VRAM to a full 10GB of even faster 320-bit GDDR6X VRAM. The 3080 also includes NVIDIA's latest iteration of the RTX triple processor system. That's made up of the programmable shader, which is responsible for standard rasterization duties, also known as normal game rendering, the RT core, which handles ray tracing, and the Tensor core, which powers the AI side of RTX and enables features like DLSS and RTX Voice. The sheer teraflop count compared to the RTX 20 series is staggering. 30 teraflops of shader performance, 58 teraflops of RT power, and 238 Tensor teraflops. As a quick point of comparison, the upcoming Xbox Series X will feature 12 teraflops of performance. While different architectures mean that you can't exactly draw a direct comparison from one to the other, next to the 30 teraflops offered by the RTX 3080's programmable shader, the gap is vast. The RTX 3080 Founders Edition also brings with it NVIDIA's new dual axial cooler. Compared to the last generation of Founders Edition coolers, it feels like a giant heatsink where the last one felt more or less like a polished metal block. The actual circuit board has been shrunk down while the overall size of the card has remained about the same allowing for a greater surface area for heat to disperse. Two fans embedded in the cooler work in tandem with the natural airflow path for most mid-tower cases. In our tests, temperatures peaked at 75 degrees Celsius using the stock fan settings. The RTX 2080 Super, by comparison, peaked at 79 degrees Celsius, and the RTX 2080 Ti at 82 degrees Celsius. Also new here is NVIDIA's scary new 12-pin power port which delivers the 320 watts of power that the 3080 requires. That's up from 250 watts on the 2080 Ti. Thankfully, if you already have the juice, you won't need to buy a new power supply just to accommodate it, thanks to an adapter in the box. That said, this splitter doesn't exactly look very sexy hanging off the side of the card, especially in a carefully wired custom cable build. When it comes to connectivity, the Founders Edition features three DisplayPort 1.4 connections, as well as an HDMI 2.1 port. Those outputs can push a maximum resolution of 7680 by 4320, also known as 8K, across four monitors. The technology in the RTX 3080 is impressive, but what really matters most is how it performs under pressure. To test the card, we ran it through a series of synthetic and in-game benchmarks, all at ultra settings. We also ran a number of specific tests to see what kind of ray tracing improvements the 3080 offers over its predecessor. Do note that for our comparison, we chose to include the RTX 2080 Super over the original RTX 2080, since it's the most recent and relevant model of that card. Let's start with the synthetic benchmarks, focusing on rasterization. As you can see, the RTX 3080 offers a significant lead over each other card that we tested against, peaking with a 56% improvement over the 2080 Super in 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra and 47% in Unigen Heaven. These are big jumps, but what's even more striking is the lead over the 2080 Ti, which topped out at 28% in Firestrike and 18% in Heaven. Next up is game performance, which we tested with ultra settings at both 1080p and 4K resolutions. Simply put, the RTX 3080 is a rasterization powerhouse. It clearly led every other card that we tested against, which isn't a surprise. What did surprise us was by how much. Compared to the 2080 Super, it delivered 29 to 51% higher FPS at 1080p for an average of a 44% FPS gain. The improvements are even more striking at 4K, which ranged from 53 to 67% improvement 
an average of 57% higher FPS across the games that we tested. With the RTX series, rasterization is only one piece of the equation. The other element, of course, is ray tracing performance. Like with the normal rendering tests, we began with a pair of synthetics, specifically targeting ray tracing on the RTX 3080 and the RTX 2080 Super. The tests used were boundary from surgical scalpels and bright memory from FYQD Studio, both extremely demanding system crushers, even with DLSS enabled. Each test ran at 4K resolution. In boundary, the RTX 3080 offered an 81% performance improvement over the RTX 2080 Super. In bright memory, the uplift was 67%. When it came to testing ray tracing improvements in actual games, we were less worried about overall FPS and more concerned with how RTX and DLSS impacted a game's FPS. To accomplish this, we tested four games at 4K with RTX and the DLSS quality preset both on and off, recording the FPS over multiple runs to verify the results. The games we tested were Wolfenstein Youngblood, Metro Exodus, Minecraft RTX, and Control. As you can tell, it's clear that the processing enhancements on the RTX 3080 mean that 4K ray traced gaming at 60 plus FPS is finally a reality. The combination of improved rasterization and enhancements to the RT and Tensor cores give it a significant advantage over the RTX 2080 Super in virtually every way, but is ray tracing less impactful on the 3080? Here are the performance hits in percentage form. With RTX and DLSS enabled, each game experienced a performance drop but the impact is generally smaller with the RTX 3080. The exception here is Metro Exodus, which showed less of a drop than the 2080 Super. Interestingly, Control actually performs better with the RTX and DLSS on than with both disabled across multiple test passes. That said, the ray tracing improvement on both Wolfenstein and Control is smaller than we hoped to find, and Metro went the opposite direction, with the 2080 Super maintaining a slight edge. This limited sampling is difficult to draw hard conclusions from, but it does look like, generally, the improved RT and Tensor cores are boosting ray tracing performance in particular. We also spent some time testing an expanded pool of games specifically for ray tracing performance at 4K with DLSS enabled. The RTX 3080 absolutely delivers on the promise of 4K gaming, ray tracing included. Of course, it's important to note here that the gains over last gen will vary depending on the game that you're playing and the settings used. DLSS, short for Deep Learning Super Sampling, is a graphics tech that uses AI to intelligently upscale games. This means that an RTX GPU can render games at, say, 1440p resolution, and then upscale to 4K. Initial versions looked a little soft, but it's improved substantially. Incredibly, it can now deliver DLSS upscaled graphics that look crisper than native 4K. This screenshot from the beginning of Wolfenstein Youngblood demonstrates exactly that. Look closely at the text and lines on the box, as well as the textures on the sides of the ammo crates. And it does this while running at a full 39 frames per second faster. Simply put, there is no reason not to use DLSS if a game allows it. The NVIDIA RTX 3080 Founders Edition is an amazing graphics card. Compared to the RTX 2080 Super, it offers dramatically improved performance, especially at 4K, and even outperforms the much more expensive RTX 2080 Ti. For $699, the RTX 3080 isn't just a welcome breath of fresh air. It is a powerful gust of wind needed to blow the doors off of 4K gaming. For more in-depth tech and hardware coverage, keep it locked to IGN.